today we are going to be starting to talk about finite difference in 1D. The three main questions we want to answer in this class is how to approximate a partial differential equation in a form that a computer can implement and solve. And this is an approximation. It's not an exact solution. So how accurate or how inaccurate, which is the same question, is our approximation? Or how do we find out? And a part of this question is how do we construct approximations that are as accurate as possible in some sense, while uh, as easy to implement and easy for the computer to solve as possible? And the third question is, how does the approximation affect our solution? So this looks like a weird question, but it is not. There is a difference between how much error is it in the approximation of the PDE, and when you solve it, how much error is in the solution. So these are two different things. We're going to look at why they are two different things and how one the approximation error affects the solution error. What's the link between them? So first of all, let's discuss finite difference for the heat equation. The heat equation is, again, partial u partial t equal to a kappa times partial square u partial x square. And this equation is both of the terms appears in the project you have to do. So the behavior of this equation is going to be reflected in your numerical solution for the project. And for the heat equation, the main thing we want to approximate is the spatial derivative term. Because if we can discretize the spatial derivative term and remove the spatial derivative, partial x, from the equation, what do we get? We get an OD because we only have one derivative. We only have time derivative. And for that OD, if we are given an initial condition, we can put it in any OD solver and solve it. So for most of you who prefer MATLAB, you probably know OD45, right? So for, the, for those of you who prefer Python, if you import scipy, there is scipy.integrate and uh, it has pretty good OD integrators. All right, if you, if you don't know that, uh, you should reconsider your <laughs> option of choosing, choosing Python. Uh, but <laughs> but the, the main goal is to get rid of the spatial derivative. Okay, so how do we get rid of the spatial derivative? We first need to approximate the solution u as a function of x and t. We want to approximate it as something of just a function of t. And let's look at how, what are the options of doing that. Going to MATLAB. So I'm going to run two demos. And the two demos is going to illustrate two different options of approximating a function of x with a finite number of floating point uh, in, in computer. So first of all, I'm going to tell you how a finite difference approximates a function. And then I'm going to tell you how a finite volume, which is the second method of discretization, is going to approximate a function. So here we go. And again, I will ask somebody to draw a function, and we'll see how on these uh, 11 grid points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 grid points, and 10 intervals, how finite difference is going to approximate your function. All right, please. By the way, I, ha I have lo uploaded my script for letting you draw something on the screen uh, on Stata. You can take a look at it. Thank you. What's your name? 
Uh, Zach. Zach, okay. Zach's function is nice and smooth, <laughs> right? So that's good. And uh, uh, his function is still shown in the thin red line on screen. But the computer is going to find a difference. It's going to forget about the whole function Zach has drawn. And the computer only remembers the circles. What are the circles? They are just the values of the function at these grid points, at the set of spatial locations. That's how finite difference approximates a function. It's basically the most straightforward way of approximating a continuous function, right? And we're going to see a little bit later on that finite volume is going to do things differently. Okay, so let's actually run the demo here. And I'm trying to reproduce the function Zach has drawn. Uh, maybe I'm doing that not so good. This is actually how finite volume approximates roughly the same function. Instead of circles, we get lines. And what are these lines? Anybody take a guess? Yes. Average value of the function in Average value of the function in the intervals. So finite volume has nothing to do with the grid points. It looks at intervals. It decomposes the domain into small intervals and approximates the function using the average values inside these intervals. That's how finite volume discretizes function. But this class, we are going to dis discuss finite difference, which is approximating a function using the values at the grid points. Okay. So we'll see advantages and disadvantages. The advantage, of course, is simplicity. It's a lot simpler to just think of the function value at individual grid points.